Okay, and we're back. So now this is the tricky part. So you're looking at this, you're like, okay, I've got a perspective grid. I've got this crazy sketch, and it really shows how bad the sketch is now. But again, the sketch is here for ideas, not for clarity. I don't know. But the thing is, is that I have to relate these two together. Uh, I could probably start selecting and distorting windows to get aligned. I, I'll be honest, I don't do that. In fact, what I'm going to do is make a copy of it because I'm going to destroy this thing as I go. But I'm basically going to align it uh, while grabbing from it. So I'm, I'm going to soft erase areas like this. So I really like these windows right here. And so I'm thinking I probably want these windows to be along this line now. So I'm just going to bring them up. And I'm probably going to just get like the first window in place. Uh, probably even the first and last, but I'll just bring them up. I think I can pull that off. So I'm going to bring these up like this. So I'm really setting them right on that line. And, and, and also, by the way, this isn't, it's not like I'm like, oh, I'm cleaning them up. There they are, they're nice and clean. That's not what I'm doing. I'm just moving them. This, these are still sketch lines. But now I'll get rid of that. So I just relocated those on that edge, right? See all this craziness? Probably can't even tell what this is. But to me, this is, uh, at least some of it I can discern, a ledge and then a decorative kind of rolling uh, I don't know what you call those. They, they sit under the ledge and kind of have an angle to it, but they're a lot of times more of a decoration, right? So that's that's what I was kind of picturing right here. Again, I'm just going to get like the, I do this lathe kind of effect. So I don't really need that. I just need that for reference. I'm going to get it right out of there. But so what I do is I, I draw the edge of it. I think I've explained this in other videos, but it really works. So I draw a edging of kind of, sometimes I just make a wild little edge and then I draw the rest back into perspective. And I call it lathing because when you work in 3D, I don't know if this still is a thing. It, it used to be, I remember it in, in Lightweight back in the day. If you wanted to do a lamp, you would draw a spline like this and then you would lathe it around, spin it around, and it go and make it into a 3D object of a lamp, and you put some flowers in there. Sorry. But, so that's the concept I think of. I don't know why that stuck in my head, and that's that's the same idea, sort of, I guess, and, but instead of 3D lathing it, uh, or making it with a lathe tool, you just extend it with perspective tools like this, but it really does work, and it, it comes out with all sorts of, you can kind of come up with all sorts of interesting designs and then for this part I'll usually just kind of I'll throw a texture in there for now again this is still rough really should be working off a different color um, and so now you see this sloped edging right here I'm gonna get that out of there and I'm really just gonna erase all this I feel like this is all stuff I can just emulate at this point I do want to save this uh, this archway though so this right here I feel like this has a good start to it so I'm going to use that. So sometimes I will actually try to pull as much from the initial sketch. It's all about ideas and energy. You know, the, the sketch lines have more energy, but then the idea stage, if there's something in there that I can use, then, then by golly, I'm going to use it. But with this part, I'm just going to, again, find that little ledge effect that I might want to use or create one. I'm going to bring it up higher away from these windows so that I've got room for another little design if I want to introduce that because I feel like that was my original concept. And then here, I don't know what I was kind of thinking here, but I can just build off of this. So I'm, I like the centerpiece. I think I had an idea for, you know, some kind of standing, um, Pillars, columns, something right here. You know, I could put like oh, something that looks like little statues sitting on top of it. So I'm still not sure there. My perspective lines are going back this way on this side. I feel like this needs something, whether or not I draw columns that go down in between this, maybe. I'm not really digging that for some reason. Or I could just do an extension of these. You know, let's try this. You'll see this on a lot of 
Victorian stuff, these kind of points that come down. I think it's Victorian, Victorian or Gothic or both, I don't know. Like this. You know, we could do like a little design into here. So you see, you just keep going on and on with this stuff. I don't know if I like this one though, it kind of looks like cake topping. Um, and then here, we need to figure out something going away from this. So it could be a sloped roof this way. So we could turn that roof the other way. And I don't know if we'd see much of the angle on the other side. It'd be If we did, it'd be very condensed. So I'm gonna throw it in there for now, but that might be a poor choice. I'll have to check that as we move forward with it. And then I'll find the edge here. And behind these, I could probably just run some horizontal designs for now. It could be brick later. It could be just uh, just horizontal lines, really. And you could texture them, make them look cool. And so now we've got a little bit more going on here. We can put maybe another level of depth into these um, these arches. You know, generally, the more the more depth and trim you can add, the better. I mean, probably not always. I mean, there's diminishing returns at some point, but it's uh, it generally looks pretty cool. Like, I think usually what you want to do is when you can see a distinction from shape to shape. Like, if it's a bunch of the same line, it's going to look silly. See that? But if you can get a thinner line in there and it still reads well, even a broken up line, but even the gap has to be a little bit different, the, the light gap in between the two edges, that has to be different as well. It can't just be, I don't know, it just can't be just another line. Uh, but it also needs to work from back here, and if it doesn't, then just don't bother. And I think that's kind of a situation here. I feel like probably a little bit too zoomed in, and really I can just get away with uh, finding the center. And then just doing a couple cross sections for windows for now. Figure that out as we go. And little, uh, you know, again, little textures, little patterns under the ledges. Do a lot for things like this. It, it's a great way to help convey scale as well. So I think that looks good. I think we would see the ledge wrapping around the sides here. I'll just shadow that for now. And this part, I feel like I got it too big. Like, so this whole pattern, and this whole bottom part of the ledge is just too big. I mean, it's like the size of those windows. That's just a bit much. So I'll push that back. Okay. So see how we clean that up, and I mean it's still not right, but it's it's cleaner and it's starting to converge along that uh, along those perspective lines, and that's that was my goal. So it's a that's a big part of the process right there, and I can continue that on multiple times. And if I really need something to be totally concise and in perspective, I can I can toggle on my uh, perspective ruler here. But I'll tell you, I I like doing as much as I can without it. It just it shows in the end result. So. I think I'm just going to clean up just a spot because all this is going to take forever for me to do it. Uh, what are we at? We're already at nine minutes into the video. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and show you how I'd continue to clean this up because it probably does look like, well, dude, that's still a hot mess. Like, how are you possibly going to make that look like something cool? Well, that's my job to show you. So I'm going to tone this back again. Um, add a layer over top. And now I will get in with an inked line. So really just you know, black ink line and see if I can touch this up for you now so some some tips and tricks I would give to this one I'm gonna rotate this so it's a little bit easier for me to get in here and do my thing but also um, just when in doubt you can use a very thin line to kind of get started because whenever you have this thin line there's a lot of room for editing the work as you go so I think that helps I feel like thin lines generally help you to keep uh, being inventive with the ideas because you're you're not com you're not too overly committed. Uh, also, see how I got this solid rigid line? 
I wanted this as basically a ruler so I don't have to turn my rulers on, uh, but I generally try to avoid those when I can because again, once I place that, it's a lot more of a, a uh, concrete line. It's more of a decision. Uh, so it's not just, oh, I need a clean line. It's like, no, you're really committing to that concept where if I do draw these lines like this, yes, they're going to be more wobbly. Uh, they are going to have a touch more energy, which is nice. And occasionally I'm going to be off. I meant that to land a little bit lower or this just needs, needs another piece of trim. Let me try that. So they are going to be more wobbly. They are going to be a bit more inconsistent, things like that. But they, you generally are going to keep developing ideas. All right, so I am. I don't know you personally and how you, you work. But for me, I can tell you that I generally am going to stay in the idea phase and stage longer if I'm using these types of lines. I don't know why that is. I guess I can't explain that to you. I guess my understanding or, or belief or perception on it is that because it's a loose kind of broken up line, our imagination still needs to work to connect the dots. Um, and I, I think that's why certain things look so appealing. Like uh, when somebody knows when to not display everything in full detail in an illustration, they, they know when to pull back on the detail and let it stay a bit foggy. Frazetta was a master of that. Um, that to me, that's that's what makes certain work like that appealing. And so I don't know if that really applies to what I'm talking about with the line art here, but it feels like it does. So uh, I just think that, actually this, these are inconsistent. Let me bring this over and I'm just going to fill in a, uh, a bit of a pillar or column or ledge, or not a ledge, a column I'll say, right there on the edges. But that means I need to move this one over. So you see there's a lot of make it up as you go type stuff when, when I work this way. I think that that does it lends to the creativity makes you think on your feet and it can come out better than you'd think and it's not maybe something that doesn't work out well for you the very first time I do this a lot but uh, I think it's worth it I think it's worth figuring it out and I fall off my perspective let me make sure I didn't the line is right there and yeah, I kind of did so that's another thing you got to be really careful of since it's not pulling the line for you, now you can toggle the line on and throw a quick uh, reference point. Let's say this line right here. Let's grab the top edge. Oops. Now remember what I talked about when you get your, your um, I'm gonna throw a couple lines, but I'm gonna make them really thin and broken up so that they're not so distinct in my design. And I'm a little bit more likely to uh, draw through them and create some concepts here. But it is nice to have a couple reference points. Okay, that's enough. And so I can just toggle that right off there. And then where's my, you know, I'm just gonna put all these in a group real quick. Just give me a sec here as I try to organize my mess. There we go. Yeah, those need to be pushed back further. Okay, so now, continue on with this craziness. Um, there's other cheats as well. I could make one window and copy it. I'm not gonna do that. I feel like, I'm gonna put this little angle right there. It's really hard too with this because there's parts where you look at it and you go, um, oh my God, is this, is this not working out? Is this, is this, you know, like it makes you second guess yourself sometimes when, you know, when you're doing this. But I've done it enough now where I know that you have to just kind of keep going. You, know, you just can't stop at this stage. And it just pulls together. It's actually really neat. Like, uh, I guess that's where experience comes in. Like you just wouldn't think that at first. You'd think, oh, this dude's wasting his time. This isn't going to work. Um, and then it does. And it's it's kind of kind of really neat. Neat part of the process. But you can see here, I'm trying to avoid uh, getting into the, cleaning it up too much. 
and I'm really looking at it more like how do I get a pass of refinement on everything like one one big pass across the whole thing because uh, if not if I stop and I just detail one section um, I can I can I don't know I feel like I can overdo it and then I might spend too much time in that one section I could have had a nice um, productive view on it if I just would have went over the whole thing consistently with say just the line art and not even clean art line art I'm just moving lines around at this point trying to find some uh, consistency in these shapes and uh, you know figure out the concept a little bit better so I think like even drawing these arches at first it's kinda hard it's always hard arches are always difficult but um, but then it's like well if I do 50 in a row I, I kinda figure it out if I do 100 in a row I'm, I'm gonna probably have like a, a bit of a, a process I do a thousand I want to tell somebody hey check this out I figured out this cool new thing with drawing arches and windows <laughs> that's just the way it is like it's just like when I had a job uh, working as a on a line in a shop it's, that's kinda how it is you start to make up like little uh, ver your own version of how to get something done next thing you know you're telling somebody like man check out how I sort these parts it's super fast like anybody wants to hear that story right but it's just it's kind of the way it is like when you do something so much you find a trick along the way I don't care what it is so the real trick is just telling yourself oh, I just gotta do this a thousand more times I'm gonna be pretty good at it that's what that's the part that most people can't get through and that's why it, it's harder than you would think most things yeah so this window I mean I just went over and looked at this one and I'm like whoa I, I slowly got smaller and smaller now they would get a little smaller based on the perspective right but not not that much so I'm just moving these lines around but then I have to work back to kind of correct it now if I want to map that over obviously there's techniques for that I've got uh, different videos on stuff like that but it's um we're just gonna eyeball it here because we're we're really trying to come up with um you know just a, a bit of speed here and it's not super fast you can see I'm not going that fast here but okay so now get the centers here And let's see. I'm so wanting to take shortcuts because I just know I can draw one of these and copy it over and be done. But no, take the long slow road here because it makes me a better human being okay pull back look at that so from back here that's starting to already look clean I, I can pretty much tell you that if I filled that in with shadows uh, and some textures it'd be good to go and so you see that there was really no ruled lines I mean I'm sure I paid the price in some areas because of it but I would even still fix it with the inks. Um, I just feel like this is gonna be a long video, but I, I gotta, I gotta give you some more, right? This isn't enough. So, let me show you how. I gotta be careful not to pull. On. I'm probably already in, in too tight on this. But let me show you how to clean this up, and hopefully, still even refine it a little bit. Or obviously, I'm gonna refine it every stage I go here at this point.
another thing I like to do at this point is I start hitting X on the keyboard and I just go back and forth from black to white. I just feel like it's faster for me to touch things up and I can always set it to multiply later. So if there's like a bad edge right here, I just, I'm kind of cycling dark to light and I start moving a little bit faster based on that. Um, so if I have to block in like a nice big chunk of shadow here, I'll go across this whole thing like this. And sometimes I'll do that a little bit messy just to speed up. And then I can go back and just kind of chisel it, you know, race it back basically. But I think the neat thing about that too is sometimes you do it and you realize, oh, it could be a little bit messy in that area. It actually looks better. Like there are those instances. It's hard to figure that out with architecture because it's you generally think of it as all clean and precise, but I don't know. I like watching the guys do it with uh, just an ink pen and no, no ruler. And they still manage to get really nice lines, which is super impressive, but it's uh, some of it you can see is just a little bit scratchy and it, looks, it retains a certain energy there. Um, now another thing I can use to clean things up if I do want a little bit more ruled line is I can drop in a shadow like this. You see that tightens up things really quickly, probably a little too much, but it is working right here so I'm going to go ahead and use it. See it gives a lot more of a concise kind of look. I feel like I lost my edge though there. What did I do there? Alright, let me turn this uh, ruler on just to see what I did wrong there. Lost my edge right through here. See that? Yeah, way off on that one. So where does this line end up? Let me start from here and just kind of white it out across this way. And see where I, where I went wrong. Where I went horribly wrong. Dun dun dun. Okay, we can fix it. You see, everything's. Everything's fixable, folks. Just keep adding lines. It'll all work out. Oh, how bad is the, is the perspective there? How'd that happen? Oh, brother. Yeah, that's pretty bad. But that's not. How did I not see that? Yeah, you know what I think part of this is, is the, um, when you get these perspective guides too close together, that's one of the drawbacks. It's harder to tell exactly where the, um, the perspective is. That's why you get the distortions at the very end. So something to be careful of. And see how I, I can't even pull the line, the direction I'm trying to pull it, which is super annoying. There we go. See, just goes sideways on me. I love it. The other one went that way. There we go. There we go. Now it's working. Now it's not. I think I love it. Okay. So, let's go ahead and take this and fix some of these while we're here. See, I'm using way too many world lines, but I'm realizing that I was insanely off on my perspective but see how it's starting to tighten up and then what we can do is we can actually add a layer still set to the perspective guide and get these cross sections of the windows and a lot of times it'll even be helpful to do these first seems a bit weird or counterproductive like you're going in the wrong direction but it, the reason I think it helps is because it becomes these these guides that you know are level and they're also not super um, distracting like when the windows are straight I think that looks good. When every brick is straight, I think that looks bad. So just things like that, where you can, again, you start to pick parts where you're like, oh, you know what, it would make sense if these were straight, but I don't want every pillar to be perfectly straight. I don't want every um, ledge to be perfectly straight. I mean, I want ledges to be pretty straight, but then I, 
I gotta go back. I need to bump some of that up. I need it to look like in in real life when you look at old buildings, they slope a lot. Like uh, that's one of the things I noticed. I guess I'm fortunate to be somebody that's from a city that has a lot of old buildings. Um, but you do you see sloping uh, sections and walls, and it's just just the way it is, right? So uh, you got to get some of that in your work, and it looks better, not worse. It looks more interesting. And just draw some, you know, look up some very old structures and draw those. They have, they have a lot of detail and, and energy and life and history to them. They're not, they're not all pristine and perfect and clean. Um, so yeah, it's something to think about. And I think there's a lot of freedom in that too, because then you start to do more freehand stuff and have a bit more fun with it and be a little more expressive and let go or at first you're just trying to put everything in you know you, there's a lot of right wrong thinking that that slows you right down and takes the energy right out of it the fun right out of it I think at least for me it does all right so now we've got a lot in here. We've got a lot of scratchy lines still. We can keep going back with some white out and just kind of edging things out. Usually clean up the next thing. Like I really should have showed you how it's better. You're better off, especially digital, go, going like this and going right into that next edge. Even probably traditional because you got white out, right? Just go right into that next edge. That way you're cleaning up all these edges as you go. See how by me stopping I made a bunch of bad edges? It's like, well, you're messing up that next ledge. No, that's actually pretty easy to fix. So it's better that I go through that. I mean, that goes right back to the old how, how to draw the marble way, right? Like, you know, draw through, draw through everything. It's the truth. Like, I mean, it applies to getting proportions right and all that good stuff is, is what they were talking about. But, uh, but also even your inking, I think that, you know, again, especially if you're digital. And so now I can just take this and clean this line right up by... Just going through here and kind of go over it and go back with white and clean it up. Pretty easy to do. And even those little uh, specks, like as long as the line's not connected, I can use those. I can leave that in for texture. So I don't even need to erase all those. It's just when they're, they look connected to the previous, you know, like a tangent, then you can't use it as texture because it's too noticeable as a tangent. So you got to get that out of there. All right, now the other thing is, and, I, and I'm just gonna detail this because it's, it's getting really long. You know, it's, I, I know you guys probably can't stand these longer videos. So what I'm gonna do now is just get in here and texturize. And you'll see this is kind of like, to me, this is like the magic anyways. It brings it all together because it it's like it hides a lot of these scratchy lines. It really does. And you can just go kind of crazy with this. Now, I wouldn't generally texturize this uh, as much as I'm going to show you because I have to also be con conscious of how close I am to the work. So right now I'm actually really far in onto a pretty big piece. So I would zoom back a bit to do even my texture work because I want to make sure that I'm not putting a bunch of stuff in there that just doesn't get appreciated or viewed or whatever. But I think this needs it. And really I just want to show you how Again, I think it pulls it all together. So I'm gonna put in lots of like little separations in the designs of the brick. Lots of little cracks. You see, I'm not mapping these out. I'm not trying to make sure they're all even, not even even to the other designs. Just throwing them in there. They're just, to me at that point, they're just another texture. But yeah, these little cracks and imperfections, man, they really, it really helped us a lot. And you see, I'm going across different directions. I'm not, it's not like I'm putting them all in one area, one unified kind of look. I'm going all over the place. I'm bouncing it around in and out. I can switch to the white out and I can do the negative in the, in the dark areas. I think that actually looks really cool. It's like one of my favorite things to do ever in my life. Right up there with spelunking. It's like spelunking and then doing this. Right up there. 
me and Batman hanging out doing some spelunking. All right, so just like that, and then I like to put a lot of like little vertical renderings with you know like the columns or whatever it is. I feel like it helps reinforce the perspective, and it just looks kind of neat. But I think that's just opinion. You don't you know you don't have to do that. I'm just saying it's something I tend to do. Again, a bunch of these little rendering marks like this. And on and on it goes. You can just keep cutting into these shapes. And it kind of just works. It just looks better and better, I think. And a little bit of vertical lines over here. Maybe shadow the windows a little bit. Kind of push those back into the recess of this area. Obviously, you can do those, uh, those cool shapes that everybody likes to do. Like, you know, you can go like this. It's like silhouettes, like almost like you see reflections in them or something behind the window. I don't know what that is, but I just do these little lines. funny too like after you do a lot of this rendering it starts to get to be where if you see too much of a open spot you feel like you have to put rendering in there it's like oh no I got an area where there's no cracks or dings or dents or whatever these old things might be we'll say cracks in the facade I gotta add more more imperfections it's kind of funny that how it exposes that and you can make all sorts of spatter brushes to save time. You don't have to do this all by hand like I'm doing. I just, I kind of enjoy it, if you can't tell already. And then, you know, so say this is too boring for you, because this is kind of boring. But again, we do have to think about it. It's getting viewed from back here, right? I mean, that's, that's more than enough detail from that distance. The only reason I'm detailing it more like this is because I don't want to leave you hanging like... You know, like feel, feel like you didn't learn what you needed to um, with this video. So I'm trying to add more, not less. But that that's all it is. Generally from that distance, you're going to add a lot less. And then what you can do, if it's congruent with the uh, light source, is you can really just block this whole side out. Probably just add a couple uh, silhouetted uh, windows. Let's see if I can get the right shape here. I don't know. Actually, I might just, I'll just block it out. So you'll see a lot of people do anyways. They won't even bother getting the other windows in there. And I could see why. It's just easier to fill it in. And then you can go back with uh, negative lines. So instead of like trying to go around these little designs, I would just fill this in. Fill this in some more. Just get kind of uh, a silhouette effect of some of these edges. And if I really had to have those designs in there, like I felt like it was going to make it look better, I would just go back with a negative line, do this. Clean up some of these lines. Just like that. And let's see if I would still want that shape of that window. Probably wouldn't even get the window. I'd probably get like the edge of the window, like the side. I don't know. Does that even reach well from back there? So maybe, yeah, it feels like it reads well from back here. So little things like that. I would just look for that and I would clean it up so it doesn't look like I literally just scribbled it in there and ran away. And, uh, and that's it. So hopefully, I mean, I'm sorry, because I feel like it was such a small area to get done, but it that, that is what I would do. Oh, one last thing I'll show you and I'll call it good. Um, is that you can keep adding to this too. So say you come back to me like, man, this area is just way too boring. Um, you could easily just say, okay, I'm gonna add these like little designs here. I'll start with like this rounded area here. I'll put another little shape on top of it. Uh, and 
needs to be rounded to, I guess. But so we got to feel like we're looking up at it. That was cooler in my head, but I'll still do it. So I would just go side to side, add these in. Obviously, pull a line first at <laughs> a level. Yikes. I can just see the comments now. Dude, your art is crooked, man. You're so crooked. Crooked mean crooked adds character, okay? Just like my teeth. Lots of character. Okay, so. Yeah, I mean, hopefully you see it. And you could keep going. You could add like these little points this way. On and on it goes. And, and they're not all going to be winners. All I'm trying to get you to see here is that these, they're just shapes. And the more you can like be creative with that. See from back here, they actually don't look bad, but they're all uneven. <laughs> it looks like I went high, low, high, low. So I would get those out of there and do them a little bit nicer. But I at least wanted to give you the idea that you can add in those little after effects pretty effortlessly and you know, a little bit of effort but it kind of goes a long ways because you've already built in all these different shapes i'm gonna get it out of there i wasn't a big fan of that so there you go hopefully that uh helps you understand a little bit of my process i would still add a little bit more texture clean up the edges just a, a smidge more uh but again i generally wouldn't go too far on something like that you gotta remember that overall the character is like this I mean, what did I spend? Over a half hour in this little section. So that's not really uh, a good workflow. So I, But to counterbalance that, what I'm going to do is just not pull in so tight. I would probably need to be no closer than this. Um, and then it would go much faster. So I do got to be careful of that. But I did feel like for the sake of the video, it was better for me to zoom in and show you uh, what I would do. So at any rate, let me know what you think. And uh, let me make sure that that landed on it. Yeah, and then we straighten that area out and just to see what it came from. So we took it from, let's merge this together. I don't even know if I'm going to keep this, but so we took it from that, came from that. All right, so we went from that to that, cleaned up a little bit of that. So you see there's a pretty big jump there uh, from that. And, and that's really the process. Like I think that's, uh, you know, because basically we're creating these buildings too. I didn't look at there was no reference I mean just vague old memories basically and so we're taking these really rough sketches like this and transforming it into something that's a little bit more discernible and usable and kind of in a sense it's like more freehand so again hope you've enjoyed today's video more on the way soon good luck with the art and bye for now